Hey, Composer Gloves here. This is another video of Music Theory Essentials, and today we're going to talk about the piano real quick. So this is a piano, in case you did not know that. And the reason it's important to know at least where the notes lie on a piano is it gives you a visual way to create chords. And that is very important as we continue on. You're going to need every help you can get as it comes to intervals and things. So I recommend um, if you don't have a keyboard, borrowing one or getting a piano of some kind or just printing out an image of a piano keyboard, just something that looks pretty much like this. I guarantee you'll find them. Uh, simply because they provide really great helps to learning theory and I'm going to start referring to the piano more in these videos as we go along especially as we talk about intervals so the way piano works is you've got this repeating pattern of three and two and it just repeats and repeats and we know that the musical alphabet goes from A to G and just repeats well I'm going to tell you where to find one note on the piano and this will help you find it and it repeats so every time you look at a piano you can find this one note and from that note you can find all the other notes however uh, it's nice at the beginning but you're going to need to memorize this and just be able to point blank know it as you go along because it will just make your life easier just like most things in music there's sort of like this all this stuff you have to memorize at first and once you know it you can start combining it sort of like how when you're first learning English it's just a whole bunch of learning definitions and trying to figure out what stuff means. But once you know all the words, you can start combining them and creating much more, much more complex things. So uh, on the two right here, if you go to the left of the, this two, the immediate left, this white key, that is a C. And this C repeats. So if we have another set of two over here, because it goes two, three, two, three. Well, if we go to the left of this two, the very left, that is a C. So now that you know that's a C, our white keys are all natural notes. So there's no flats or sharps or accidentals or any weird stuff. So you can go C, D, E, F, G. And we know that our musical alphabet stops at G and repeats. So it would go A, B, and you can't see this last note, C. So that is also a C. Let me move this. All right. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And I recommend just using C as your reference point of learning where these things lie. It will just make your life easier. Now, after that, we've already talked about these black keys, about inharmonic pitches. Uh, if you look up the Music Theory Essentials on accidentals, it will explain that this is a C sharp or a D flat, and this is an E flat or a D sharp. This would be a G flat or an F sharp. And so as we go along, it's just important to remember this. So this is a C, and now what I recommend doing is just getting a piano and putting your finger somewhere on it. Close your eyes and put your finger somewhere on it and say what note that is. Because it repeats, so it goes C, this is a C, this is a C. And you say, oh, now hit all the F sharps. And you say, oh, this is an F sharp because this is a C, C, D, E, F, G. And we know that uh, a G, or actually, you know, you go to F, you reach F, and you say, okay, now I need to sharp it, F sharp. If we want a G flat, we'd go to G and go, oh, this is a G flat. As you move along, it's like English. At first, it's you have to think real hard about what everything means, but as you move along, uh, you can start forming sentences, and you're more focused about the meaning of your sentence and the way you're communicating and things. It evolves. Well, in music theory, it's the same way. At first, you feel like you're just talking about notes, and you're just thinking about all these notes all the time, and, and it's just confusing, and you're thinking about all these extra scales and chord qualities and just all this stuff. But after you get past that phase of just m learning the definitions and what things sound like, you will be able to start talking more about the meaning, chord cadences, and things that imply things. It's why uh, music is fun at higher levels, why, why people still enjoy it, why it doesn't just dry up from boredom. So uh, just giving you some hope here. So you're just going to need to go, and the best way to do this is to just practice it and just gain experience. Like everything I tell you now, you're going to have to go and experiment on to gain your own experience and will make it more meaningful to you so that you can use it. Having this information is only useful as you learn to use it. So again, C, D, E, F, 
G, and then this is a, these are the inharmonic keys. So this would, for example, be A flat, or this would be B flat, or it could be A sharp, and this could be G sharp. It's all relative to uh, this, uh, the scale you're working in, which we'll talk about at a later date. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a blessed day.